Coming to spiritual Tibet in the 1950s, there were few eyes here from the outside world. I am the mystical Paldon, who has never had sight, yet my cryptic words and stones explain the coming changes to our villagers. Our unfolding story revealed young Doge reaching out to understand life's impermanence. When he stumbles upon a dead raven in the forest, Yon Ten, full of mischief, is ever close to Doge and his confidant. Doge is captivated by the lovely Sang Mu, heartbroken for her parents are taken from her home with the arrival of Liang Wu and Chen's army from China, leaving her filled with questions, no answers to be found. Her friend, beguiling Opame, dances to celebrate Lozar, while Liang Wu and Chen plot to win the hearts of Opame and Sang Mu. Will Doge's direction be for him to enter the monastery with his beloved mentor, Lama Kuchen? Or will he be with Sang Mu amidst the devastation around them? News has reached the monastery that the Dalai Lama has escaped to India and Doge treks into his own destiny in the caves of Pema Shalpak. Tashi Tibet, a story that continues to be told, a story that's already been lived. Scene three, cave at Pema Shell Park. The night storm has brought peace from hungry souls and angry ghosts. The rain has found me. This moment I'm present in it. I spread peace to all sentient beings as we cling to suffering. We attach ourselves to it. We live in the dream. Open mind, clear sky, clouds part to reveal above the eternal sunshine from the sun's rays. The storm calms, I am wrapped in its mist. A raven flies down. Oh, my friend, you're back from your past life. Were you a butterfly before? Now with large wings to take flight to places dreamed? Are you to become the bird Garuda, sent by Vishnu, with wings large enough to cover the sun from the village? Samsara belongs to us. We will circle inside it until we attain Nirvana. The raven flies away. First thought, embrace the darkness. All men first move from birth to tomb, your source, your Siddhartha meditated for 49 days under the Bodhi tree before he was called Buddha. For centuries, one generation follows the next, just as I came to Pema Shalpok to walk in the footpaths of my ancestors. I give for myself warmth with this offering to my body. Lama Kunchen signed to me to return. In honor of my teacher, it is time 
Doge gathers his belongings. So to places for high watch in empty silence in Shingate, sit without motion before my close eyes. I reach for a scroll heavy with pride. Your cave gives me this moment. A bat flies out. Doge sees a crevice in the wall. He reaches in and pulls out a beautiful amulet, which is glowing. An ancient amulet. You revealed yourself to me. Paulden's prediction speaks. Who are you meant to protect? Are you for me? Or to protect the life of a loved one? I understand. This mystery, this sign, soon I will know where it belongs. This is what Paulden's stones showed him. His blind eyes saw the truth and knew. Mama Kunchen taught once of relics from ancestors hidden in these mountains. The ancient oracles knew the day and the time, the moment you will be uncovered. Doge holds the amulet up. He puts a string through it and hangs it around his neck. The Lucifer falls in my fingers, cool, calm, quiet, smells the bad of war. What will remain, rain, mud, all together in one sense. My name is my name. Who was before the ice was between the naked mountains? These are the people who tell the truth. Scene four. The river. My son Mu. A boat ride? We need time alone. Winter comes and goes. A season. Days are forever while you are gone, Doge. My mind turns to us and asks questions. But things change when you return. You turn inward towards the Dharma. At times, I am afraid. Two wolves fight inside of me, Sanmu. As I was on the mountain, they grew still and became friends. Looking inside of myself, he was different, like from a mountain peak looking into the valley. The answers, are they in your heart? Your words confuse me. Many days pass. You are in retreat, Doge. My friends on the farm have been ill. The river beside the farm grows murky with debris. Logging and mining. You roads cover grass pastures for our yaks. Our ancestors return to chaos as each is reborn into a new life. A lone bat revealed to me an amulet, hidden in a crevice in the rocks the morning I return. Paul then knew this amulet has a story and we are characters in it, still being written. Just as Lama Kuncheng weighed his pebbles, we face which path to take to find our balance. The villagers cry and the rivers can't hold the tears of our people. This should be yours to wear. 
My heart tells me this. It will offer you protection. Protection. Doji, while you were gone, I spent time with Liang. He has promised to try to find answers for me where my parents are. If I am to teach, I need more education, so I saw him. I'm torn too. Dreams of that day, they haunt me still. Now I, memories begin to fade and I cling to them, afraid that Paula and Amala will become ghosts and disappear into the evening fog. Paula and Amala can never vanish. You sing their songs for them, you are their voice. Just as all children sing their parents' songs, then they become guides for the children who follow them. Liang Wu appears on shore behind a tree, watching. Liang Wu. You know my feelings about him. He hunts you as a fox who seeks a mouse to play with until he tires of the game. He treats us as though we are already dead, uncaring. His interest in you is from a man's view, not from a soldier's. What is it, Doge? What is it, the water? From the Chinese workers upriver, look. Doge pulls out a mask and a large bell. These were stolen, taken from the monastery and cast away. Sacred objects. Our culture thrown into the river to decay in the darkness of the water from their beginnings generations ago. We must hide them. and Doge both look up to the mountains. We're given our lives by these snowy mountains, valleys, rivers. Buddha, together we pray. For vision is mind, mind is empty. Emptiness is clear light, clear light is union, and union is great bliss. Our mountains become shadows from these changes. Alone when the world was young, the mountains were content. taken away when they come upon several bodies of Tibetans floating in the river. Scene 5. The villagers mourn the dead. How many? How many more will be killed or locked away? Thrown into the muddy river. The waters reveal their secrets. My friend's husband, gone. How will she feed her children? We all go quiet with fear. You return to a world, world of death and arrest, Doje. Our people are as frozen as the snowy peaks. We mourn those who have left us, free in the spirit, filled light of reality. Buddha appears to them, and soon rebirth will come. They follow the white light of conception to their new parents. You, lions among humans, gone to freedom in the present, past, and future, in the worlds of ten directions, to all of you, with body, speech, 
and sincere mind, I bow down. May I traverse all my lives in the world, free of karma, afflictions, and interfering forces, just as the lotus blossom is undisturbed by the water's wave, just as the sun and moon move unhindered through the sky. I shall enter the very presence of all my guides, those lights of this world who are yet to appear, those sequentially turning the wheels of complete awakening, those who reveal nirvana, final, perfect peace. Incense has been lit. Enter Bardo until your rebirth. Shadows of birds on the side of the mountain and on the walls. They have come for the dead. We are a village caught with other villages in something we know nothing about. Death comes to us not as an enemy, as silence is only a conversation. Is death our enemy? Is silence a place between more death? Scene six. The monastery. Doge sees Lama Kuchin tied Mouth covered. Ah, I expected you, Doje. Your friend, Lama Kun Shane, is quiet today. I questioned him, but he seems to grow cold and have no answers. He asks for help from you. Perhaps I could spare him if you will stay away from our sweet Song Mu. What does it mean to Lama Kunchen for you to steal Sun Mu's heart? Does the moon grow closer to the sun? Sun Mu will never get close to your black soul, Liang. Doje, she will run to me. She needs me. Chen, tie his hands and leave. Doje wants a private conversation with me. Doje! Why do you think you are not in prison now, or executed? You are defiant, arrogant, and I tire of your boyish games. Song Mu, beautiful Song Mu. She would hate to see you dragged off, haunted still by the memory of her parents. You betray our country. For that alone, you should face death. I stand here facing you. Telling you I will not reject the Dharma, Liang. Lama Kunchen prepared me. I'm focused on peace. My ancestors' traditions will not be forgotten. Your soldiers' weapons are not strong enough to water the flames of my beliefs. Enough! Do you hear me? Lama Kunchen. Behind bars. How many years will he look out of his prison cell? Liang! Let me speak now. You want to hear this. Lama Kunchen's life comes before my own, and you must not harm him. In return of this promise from you, I will turn away from Sun Mu's affections and let Lama Kunchen know of my wishes to become a monk. No one must know of this, understand? We are agreed. Doge depart. Samu. My Samu, there was no other way. 
I have betrayed you to save Lama Kunchen. My feet travel the path of samsara, reflecting pain and a suffering that can't be escaped unless nirvana. I'll miss you, Salmo. In the sunshine and in the moonlight. The decision is done. You shall never be mine. Chen, alone in darkness, outside the door to the monastery. I work to honor the motherland and will surpass Liang soon. My place is not beneath his feet, for I am worthy, I am deserving. I am Chen! You will see soon, Liang. Very soon. Do the things you need to do So every path will not come back I take Lama Kunchen this painting. I will tell him I'm now his student. I must be convincing, although the decision comes from Liang Wu's hands. No choice, except to protect Lama Kunchen from Liang's hands. He never failed me. Now the wheel has turned. My sun moon, my tears fall onto a pathway of stone. Your fears become truth. I have Obame. What is it, love? Love. Music that only your heart can know. Liang Wu's office. Liang, I am ready. I followed each of your orders. It's time to raise my rank. How many times do you ask? How many? You annoy me, Chen. I'm at work now, so leave me to it. Can't you see I am busy? You distract me with standing there. Busy. He wants me to learn, but gives me nothing but physical labor, the work of a Tibetan. I follow his orders every day. He knows from what he sees I'm a better soldier, stronger, wiser, emotionally, physically. Power rules his judgment. If he advances me, he fears I will soon take his position. So he keeps me as his rickshaw boy. My temper flares when I hear Leon Wu. Leon Wu! Remember that night? <laughs> that night we drank whiskey. You told me too much, Liang. Alcohol does that to a man. Poor Sun Mu. Seeing her parents taken away, and with little thought, you ordered their execution. No more of that, Chen. Where was your soul that day, Liang? What are you saying? I am your commander. Sun Mu is waiting to hear from me. I sent word by Yantin. Oh, how she will cry and mourn, and after I tell her it was you? <laughs> you, Liang? You blackmail me, Chen. I understand you can request a transfer back to China. That would leave your position open for someone like me. Traitor. You betrayed me, bastard! Out! Out, Chen! I can no longer look in the face of a traitor. You go to Sung Mu by tomorrow, or I go to Sung Mu. Goodbye. Liang takes out a piece of paper and begins to write. Above him, face of Sang Mu appears. You cannot see it, you cannot hear it. The drum sound from the deepest stillness. It comes, you listen to more than you need to hear. You lose yourself. You wake up in the morning, and in an instant, nothing is the same. Vegetable stand near river. Liang Wu walks up to Sang Mu's stand and sees a long Tibetan scarf of Sang Mu's. He picks it up and puts it to his face tenderly, then lays the letter down where she will find it. Taking the scarf, he walks back towards the bridge 
where the bodies were found. It is sunset, and he sees a Tibetan woman throwing lotus blossoms into the river, a tribute to their loved ones. He takes a few steps towards the bridge, then looks down at the scarf and turns slowly and walks into the edge of the woods beside the bridge. He watches the woman grieve. Where is my honor? There is none. Song Mu, what may have been? Chen is right. My heart pumps death. What have I done to her? What have I done to them? Liang takes Sang Mu's scarf and twists and tightens it around his neck with a stick, asphyxiating himself. Is this Liang Wu? Cold hands have no power. He is a ghost. another lotus flower into the river. Scene seven, road beside river bridge. From the farmer's harvest, we now have more customers every day. They speak of us with pride as though we are their daughters. <laughs> Unless they take our stand and give it to the Hans. Beggars are in the street, no work or food. We are blessed, we have what we need. The only who holds them back from us for now. For now, Yontan keeps his business because the Han depend on him to repair the things. 
Yontin is always near me whenever he can be. <laughs> he cares for me. Are you in love? Is it Yontin? <laughs> love. What we all want. Maybe. And you and Doje? Oh, look, there's someone on the ground. No time, hurry. We're late. Hungry people are waiting for us. The village stand. Sangmu sees the note with her name on it. Liang Wu's suicide note telling her the truth. No. No. Pala and Amala were killed? Liang ordered it? Oh, Sangmu. Sangmu. Liang, near the bridge. It was him. Chen was there. I saw him. Pala and Amala are gone. Gone from me. The truth is in front of me now. I wanted to see them and care for them. As they cared for me. Why did Liang do this? Why? The answers are gone with Liang's last breath. Doje. Doje, where are you? Yantin, have you seen Doje? Have you not heard? About Doji? What are you saying? Where is he? Please. He has gone to Lama Kunchen. His decision is made. I have to find him. One choice a hundred smiles for one side. Doje enters the monastery. The time at Pema Shaopok helped me to see your vision. Sitting at your side, studying the Dharma. This is what I want. We allow it. Listen carefully. I must speak quietly. We will discuss your future soon. Not now. Conditions worsen here, and I have fears that the monastery may soon face destruction. So many are gone. You must do this for me. Go to the home of Alden, the mystic, just outside the village, and ask what will be for all of us. Tell him I sent you because his thoughts carry to me on the wind, like the sound of drums. Return here before dark. I will wait. Now, go. Doje, Famu. You cry, what has happened? Liang Wu. That day in the village, he chose Paula and Amala for execution and had them both killed. You knew his darkness and tried to warn me. How did you hear this? Liang left a letter and killed himself. Beside the bridge. His cold heart strangled him. He's dead now. But I must. Lama has asked me to go see Pauldron right away. I could see in his eyes the importance. Go find Opame and wait. I'll return soon. Have you promised yourself to Lama to be a student? A monk? No. He held me back. Everything has changed now. Liang is gone. So much is happening. Our people are restless with fear. Stay away from the soldiers.
Halden's cottage. Halden, sitting quietly by the fireside. Near him is a wolf he has tamed into his pet, as well as an owl who sits on a perch. It is Doge. I knew by the sound of your steps on the leaves. You were with Lama Kuchin. Yes. You two speak with no words, a special gift. Lama Kunchen knows that trouble is no longer held at arm's length. It is right here as we speak. What do you see? Is there hope, or should we flee before our last breath? Halden throws stones onto a small blanket. Doge, there was a reason you were sent to find strength on the mountain. Reach inside yourself. In this moment, you are not a student or a seeker. The answers are there, waiting. Chase ghosts from the past and the shadows of the future. Show me the way. Go back to your teachings. Remember the three fires, the three poisons, greed, anger, and delusion. Stay away from these, for they keep you from lingering with the beauty of all. They are in man, but he tries to hide them. It isn't an enemy that lures a man towards them, but instead, they are within his own mind. I was taught a lesson by the Lama about the Tur. They wait until the right moment to take root in someone, but until that moment arrives, they are concealed. I feel a stirring inside of me, a glimpse of it now, an awakening. Look up, Doge, into the heavens. You can be my eyes. What do you see? I see a baby's touch and a mother's sigh. Objects of light that reach further than my eyes can see or my mind can imagine. Behind the stars there is darkness, a void in all beings. The other side of the mystery. This oneness with the universe you will need in the hours and days to come. Think of these moments and hold them close to you. You are ready, Doge. Villagers, look to you. Come along with me. You must go alone. You are needed. The village holds its breath and waits. From the sky my earth holds an ancient sign. Walk alone, walk before me, walk beneath my feet, Paulden, does your light I see? What's here for me? How we free to be? Is there trouble behind, beyond your eyes? Thinking 
drink their wines. Can we see inside what the future will hide? On breath, not a sigh. Thank mm -hmm. you.